Okay, hi there and welcome to test number seven in our series, The Edge and Economics Revision. This test is about the labour market. Here are five questions that you can check and test your understanding. Good luck with these five questions. Question number one, to increase the number of cleaners at a local school from 10 to 11, the employer has to increase the hourly rate of pay from £8 to £8.25. The question is, what is the marginal cost of labour to the employer of increasing their workforce. Okay, this is the moment to press the pause button, have a go at the question, and then just press play when you want to go for the answer. So they're adding one extra person to the payroll. They have to lift the pay from £8 to £8.25. What's the marginal cost of doing that to the firm? The answer is C, £10.75. They employ 10 people. The hourly labour cost is £80, 8 times uh, 10. They employ 11 people, it's £11 times £8.25. They'll have to pay the existing 10 people another 25p per hour as well. That adds up to £90.75, which means that the cost of adding the 11th worker is £10.75p. Answer C. Here's question number two. Where might government intervention to raise the wages of a group of workers be justified in order to prevent their exploitation. Press the pause button please, have a go at question number two. So when might intervention in the labour market to increase wages be justified? The right answer is D, in, in, the, in the case of monopsony. This is highly topical and worth checking out our videos on monopsony in the labour market. A monopsony employer has buying power in the labour market. They employ a lot of people. They may use that power to set wage levels below the level we would see in a competitive labour market. And that's a cause of potential labour market failure and justifies some form of intervention, perhaps to a minimum wage. Question three. To encourage graduates to teach certain subjects, bursaries of up to £26,000 are available in England. The bursary is offered to train the teachers in some subjects, for example, maths, is greater than a year's starting salary. What does that data suggest? Have a go, please, at question number three. OK, so they're having to offer big bursaries in excess of one year's starting salary to get people to become a maths teacher. What does that suggest? It suggests the answer is... B, the evidence and the extracts hints that large bursaries, generous financial assistance is needed to tempt people into teaching rather than alternative careers. That suggests the labour supply into teaching is wage inelastic, particularly in shortage subjects. Question number four. Factors that affect the demand for labour include what? A, B, C or D. Have a think about question four. So what do we think about question four? We're looking here for two factors that affect labour demand. So you make a distinction between labour demand and labour supply. And if we do that, the right answer is A. Two factors, demand for final output, because basically labour, of course, is a derived demand. It's employed to produce goods and services, which ultimately gets sold in markets. And also the productivity of workers will determine the marginal revenue product. Some of those factors in B, C and D refer to labour supply. We're looking for two factors affecting labour demand. And here's our final question in this set. Today, remote working is a standard feature of the modern workplace. That's working for a company but not being based in an office. A recent survey suggests that the number of people working remotely four or five days per week has increased from 24% to 31% in 2018. Now, the question is, one effect of this trend of increased number of remote workers is what? Have a go, please, at question number five. So what did you get for five? Are you close to 100% on this test? The right answer, the correct answer is C. Improved staff retention rates, greater productivity. Homeworking is now a key part of being a, f a flexible labour force. A lot of businesses now offer some of their employees the chance to work at least one or more days at home each week. That helps to improve staff retention, 
It reduces the amount of commuting time. Uh, should help improve work-life balance, which ultimately has a favourable favourable effect on on um, staff retention. Uh, people don't leave us as often, and also on productivity. So the answer to question five is C. There we go. Five questions on the labour market.